Hello, guys. Uh, so I'm not Justin Bieber. Sorry for that. So I'm Benjamin Delty. My nickname is John T. Kiwi. Maybe you've heard about it. I have a little strong accent. So, it, so if, it's, if it's so difficult for you to understand me, please ask me questions after that, because I won't be able to understand you sometimes. It happens. So I'm the author of Mini Cats. Uh, maybe you know the programs. Maybe you don't know. We will see that just after in a few slides. It's not my real work to create Mimikatz. I'm a security researcher by night, like Batman, in fact, but in not a good way, of course. I also create Kikio, another program to make, uh, less known than Mimikatz, but I think maybe more dangerous sometimes. So you see all the certifications that I don't have, of course, because I don't care about it. <laughs> so just a little reminder, even if I'm a nice Kiwi, I have a nice statistician shirt, Kiwi are dangerous just a little bit, even teeny queries. So sometimes it's the fruit, sometimes it's the animal, i let you guess. So why I created Mimikatz? That's very easy to understand. I wanted to learn C language, in fact, C++ at, the, at these times. But when you learn language at school, come on, it's boring. You, you only make multiplication table for the while, some loops, but not really interesting. But at the same time, I wanted to understand some attacks on the market, like Pazoash, like exporting private key not exportable. In fact, a lot of stuff that are not for any legitimate reasons. But well, export, export uh, not ex non exportable private key can be for legitimate reasons in enterprise, especially for the, when the certificate of the boss is locked on these previous computers. So it kind of helps. So it was only to learn. So learn language, you will see we create very fun programs. So it started a few years ago, maybe 20, uh, 10, year, 10 years ago, uh, 11 years ago. But why I created my own program? Because there is other programs on the market. First, um, existing programs uh, were not working on X64 architecture. It doesn't work on modern version of Windows NT6 at these times. So a lot of enterprise had Windows XP, Windows 2003, and a lot of programs was designed just for that because they were old researchers. But there was, a, there was a gap between the existent market with Windows 2008 and the tools. It doesn't work. It crashed a lot, especially on domain controller. So I wanted to build my own at first to bypass some GPU in my enterprise because I wanted to have the command prompt and stuff like that. So it was very easy to make some patch. I even created keylogger stuff like that. But at the same time, I started to create Mimikatz. So before speaking about Mimikatz, I will show you a little dialogue I had with a big company. I will let you know, maybe guess which one. Uh, so sorry for translation. It was in French because I have the French support. So, hey guys, I found something maybe dangerous in your operating systems. Uh, I think it can be very mad, and your customer will not be happy. Uh, the support was, oh, come on, yes, some course, open a case, send us a lot, a lot of files. But at the end, the big company said to me, that's not dangerous. You must be administrator to do that. You must have privilege. That's okay. It's a good answer at these times. It was four years ago. But I say, hey, a lot of attackers are already privileged when they come to your computer to make some attacks. So maybe you must care about it. It can be dangerous. Or at least maybe some, make some documentation to the user to specify it can be dangerous if you are privileged on the computers. OK. That was our answer. One fix, my design. It has been the answer for several companies for years. Of course, thank you for your report. Valued customers, don't hesitate to contact us in the future. Okay. And of course, you will have a survey just after this call. <laughs> Come on. It was my first fail. <laughs> I tried at least. But come on. Let's try a group case. So I, I meet a lot of friends in France, with, you know, in other big companies, to try to, you know, in the same times, open all the same case to this big company. Maybe it will work. It was a French group case, so it was a big fail because we are not big enough. <laughs> so what's the solution for that? So the first one is the hey team. Maybe it's in Lego, so you don't recognize it, but it was a hey team. I was in a big hope. So what was this issue? It was the first public version of Mimikatz with password. So it's not a big deal for this big company. I just found the way 
to have all the password in clear text. All your Windows password when you log on on your domain controller, all of that in clear text. But come on, it's by design, one fix. Hey, come on, for, for you it's a little je ne sais quoi, it's classy. So it was in clear text. At this time, you know it's dangerous because for seven years, a lot of attacks embed these kind of tools or mimicats like it in the, uh, in the attack vectors. But in 2011, come on, it's not dangerous. We, you don't care about it. Let's, do, let's continue this research. So what I've done after that? I continue my research, of course. So I found more and more passwords, a lot of passwords. Four years, it was wonderful. I, I, I like it a lot. Uh, I even make some evolution to avoid DLL injection because a lot of agents try to detect this kind of attacks. So I removed it. I make some uh, attacks that don't uh, need mimicats on the computer. You only made um, a dump from the memory from the computer, and you bring it at home. This is bring your own dump, like Beard, the Beard for attackers. So it works. <laughs> And you can also make kernel debugging. With, with that, it's nearly impossible to detect this kind of attack of computer because there is no specific tools on the computer. You can use Windows embedded tools to make these attacks. It was funky. Yes, I did my first conference. It was in 2012 in Moscow, but a PhD days. I was very, uh, very, very young at these times. This is me, but younger. Uh, I even make some jokes about Microsoft that didn't fix at all this, this, this kind of behavior for one year. I was very happy. Hey, come on, Microsoft, do some things. They only blacklist the tools uh, just before the conference, of course. So it was my start. It was my first conference. This is the first time I go out of France to speak about my research. It was very fun. But in the same days, yes, it was the same conference, eh, some Russian spy coming to my room. <laughs> just to learn about what I do. So it was, it's a crazy uh, history. I don't have time to, uh, to speak about it in details, but I just discovered some person in my room in front of my computer, like in films. So there is a full article on Wired, so you can go <laughs> see it. It was, it was very fun, because at this time, the source code of Mimikatz was not public. I, I, uh, at this time, I, I planned to release the source code just after the conference. The Russian government was not aware about it. So they sent me spy in my room, and they sent me uh, some official person just after my talk. Come on, I was very young, and I was like that. <laughs> it was very dangerous. So at this time, I didn't go to Russia anymore for the moment. So maybe you know some usage of Mimikas just after the, my, my talk. So maybe Diginotar, the Bundestag, NotPetya, some casino. I speak only about public ones that you have seen maybe in article, because there is a lot of companies that have been attacked with Mimikas inside. But for sure, they don't want to be named. So, but you can find a lot of reports by federal securalists, even from cyber reasons. They, uh, they helped me to make my, uh, my slide because just a few days, a few weeks before this talk, there was an article that spoke about Mimikatz inside. So no, cyber reasons was not attacked by Mimikatz. It is a report for one of your customers. Well, I hope you didn't be attacked by Mimikatz. <laughs> Who knows? <laughs> even big companies have been attacked with Mimikatz, very well known, so even governments. And sometimes governments use it. It happens. But there even been some usage in Mr. Robots. Come on, you, you can't imagine my phone the day after Mimikatz was inside <laughs> this series. So even that, it's not good. There is some mistake in the, in the screenshots, but they didn't want to fix it. Ah, come on. But that's how Mimikatz have been known. But we have to go back. Just at the same time, the big companies that said before, hey, it's not important, we won't fix it. They tried to make some change in their operating systems. So I know it's about some customer cases, not French ones. I know it's about some companies, some governments with three letters inside. You have the choice in the US to, to know what is uh, the agency behind. But just after that, they tried to make some improvement in Windows. So they introduced restricted admin mode. It was cool. It allowed you to log on on a terminal server with the passwords. Yes, but it also allowed pass the hash on terminal server. So dangerous. Don't do it. They also made LSI protections. They come on. It's a protected process by the kernel. You can't attack it, of course, but there is a, a driver in Mimikatz, so you can bypass it very easily. And for sure, there is protected user security group. It's a good one. Really, you can, make, you can remove a lot of passwords and telemash from memory. Yes, but there is Kerberos tickets. It, exi it still exists. So you can dump it and use it very easily. But it's a good move. 
They also make a lot of papers, so you can read it. PDF, blah, 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 blah. So mitigating past the hash, credential stealing, uh, even they make two white paper about it, and they even make a key, a key B. It's, it's internally named the Mimikatz KB because it's remove a lot of stuff from memory. Uh, it's a garbage collector for credential, in fact. And it removes, and it gives you a lot of options. What is very fun, they backport it, even that, this is the first time Microsoft backport a security patch for, um, for not fixing bugs, but to improve security to Windows 7. Maybe you know, about, maybe you know why. This is because in the field there was a lot of attacks. And I say a lot, uh, it's a very a lot, yes. But just after that, Wisdom 10 was here. It was a new app from Windows. They introduced VSM, this virtualization, and they make some isolation. It was very cool. They put credential on one side, and they put Windows on the other side. It's a good move. Attacks still exist on this kind of architecture, but it's, very, it's more, more, more difficult to dump credential. You have to intercept them or to hack some memory uh, hardware. But it, it still works. In a nutshell, what is credential guard? This is like a crypto HSM on one side. You send your credential, it, it gives you back a blob. So if I dump the memory of Windows, I only have a blob. It is encrypted, that I, and I don't have the key. Only the HSM, the secure world, have the key. And if I want to answer a challenge on the networks, I send back the challenge on the blob to the secure world, like an HSM, and it will calculate the answer for me and give me the result. So, of course, it, it, still, it, it looks like perfect, but in fact, you see that at one time, the hash is in the normal world. So I still attack it, but it's another story. I made some tweets about it a lot. <laughs> so in the same time, I spoke about passwords, but there is a lot of other complicated things in Mimikatz. So I created also the idea about golden tickets. That's, um, that's exactly like uh, Willy, with Willy Wonka. You have a Kerberos ticket that will uh, work forever, for 10 years if you want, and you can, every, you can be everyone on the domain without knowing their passwords. You can even be someone that doesn't exist. Do forensic with that. Good luck. It's impossible. I also create silver tickets. It's not like Willy Wonka one, it's, but it's, it's less powerful, but more stills, so it's okay. I also make the DPAPI DPI backup key. With that, I can decrypt all your certificates, I can decrypt all your saved passwords on the domain with only one key. I don't need your passwords. So it's very cool for forensic and recovery, but it's very cool for attackers too. And there is no logs of this, of this kind of attack. So there is also a skeleton key in Mimikatz. No, it was discovered by SecureWorks. It's very cool. You can use your password with your account, but I can use my password on your account too. So you will have two passwords. So you can log, you, it will, you will not notice I'm here. And with the French friends, I also create DC Sync and DC Shadow. This is a way to get, to get all the hash on Kerberos key or even some time password from the domain controller remotely. I just ask the domain controller to send me back the NTLMH of the users or the Kerberos key, and the domain controller will do, because he thinks I'm a domain controller too. So before I finish uh, that, just a little word from a security guru, Alex Ionescu. He speaks French, he's not French, but who okay. cares? If you disagree with the assessment of the security boundaries, publish the tools. That's right. Make some park. So my little conclusion about that. First, always communicate with vendors or security companies. It will protect you. You will have trace. If you have some problems with authority, you will have trace. Hey, I tried to make some uh, responsible disclosure at first. And I did, in fact. And sometimes, when it works, you can have some bounties and some fix. So it can be cool. Do it. Uh, for people that make research, POC, make some POC. If you, want, if you only have theoretical attacks, nobody cares. Maybe you can make business with that, it happens. But if you don't have a real tool, a real attack, and you, can't, you cannot make a real demonstration in real life, executives will not want you to make some stuff. You must, you must show them their passwords, and they will love it. I can guarantee you. And each time, of course, use the latest, window, the latest Windows version of the latest uh, uh, version of the tools that you want to attack, because otherwise they don't care. Oh, it's fixed in the new one, and it will take months. Another advice is very simple. 
visibility changes everything. This is why I have this station shirt. I'm very, very visible with that. But to be more honest, uh, when you are a little bit known on the internet, and know when I make some tweets, I have some PM from Microsoft uh, in five minutes. So it helps a lot when I, have, when I want something to be changed or when I want to uh, make something better. And the, the official way doesn't work because they don't care. By design, one fix, it's not, it's not in the security boundaries. Okay, no problems. So you consider it's not dangerous, so I can speak about it on my blog, and I can make a tweet about it. Yes, each time I do that, there is a manager that are not in very good situation now. <laughs> and please, for vendors, companies about Windows security, or even enterprise, don't consider it's not a vulnerability for you. It cannot be, be exploited by attackers. Say, oh, come on, we don't care. It's in DMZ. We have made this countermeasure. Yes, that's true. But the attacker don't care about all of that. If it works, you will, be, you'll, you will, you will have a lot of problems, despite all you have done before. This is not because you have, you have a SOC, you have a lot of projects, you have a lot of security measures, you have a lot of executive aware about cybersecurity mounts and stuff like that. They don't care at all. They will attack you because it works, not because it's correct. And sometimes they don't want to be discreet at all. They will, leave, they will let a lot of traces because they don't care. So only the result counts. But to be very honest, because you may be, uh, guess the big company was Microsoft, maybe. So I don't say only bad things about Microsoft. This, is, this was the old Microsoft. Microsoft, they don't, they don't want it to, um, to have some problems with searcher a few years ago and they, it's by design, architecture, we won't fix. But at these times, they try to understand security researcher. They try to make some move even inside the OS on Windows is moving very quickly. And they have better relationship with researchers and have clearly improved their security level. At this time, it's very difficult to make some new attacks against Windows. For example, a good example is, please go see the security page of Windows about, about bug bounty. You will see that some bugs will, own, will uh, earn you about $250,000. Uh, $50, it's big, even on the official ways. You don't have to go to the black market for that. It will be enough to have a security uh, issue with Microsoft, so do it. We'll have a lot of money. Oh. So sorry, I, I spoke very fast. There are two minutes left, but uh, that's all. I, do, I hope I didn't uh, afraid you too much. 